good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for attending our talk, and thank you, Blue Hat Committee, for giving us the opportunity to present our research here. So with that, yeah, our talk is more about like how adversaries abuse OAuth application with diverse TTP to automate attacks. So with that, myself, Venkat, I have been in security industry for more than a decade. Currently, I work for Microsoft and leading a cloud app threat research team. And prior to Microsoft, I have been worked in McAfee and computer associated technologies. And I mean, I've been speaker in various other conferences. My co-speaker. Hi, everyone. I'm Shalin Dev. I have close to seven years of experience in security industry. I'm a security researcher at Microsoft, and we are part of the same team. Uh, my focus is in detecting and disrupting cloud application threats. Yeah. Thank you. So here is the agenda. So here, the takeaway would be like prevalence of OAuth app threats and how uh, TTPs were been evolving for various other campaigns. This would be the overall view on the agenda part. So let me start with a question. So is users and devices are most prevalent threat entity or asserts? So what about applications? Here I'm mentioning like cloud applications. So let, let's see uh, more deeper on this. Let's start with SaaS apps. So SaaS apps. So recent times, we have seen like SaaS apps have been deployed and the usage have been heavily used exponentially for various other reasons. Four of the top reasons are digital transformation and shift in software approach and cloud adoption and increased efficiency to have a good scalability across it. Since the, because of organizations are moving to cloud, obviously the actors would be behind it to steal all those sensitive data and resources from the organization and enterprise. So what we have noticed is, like, though there are lots of SaaS apps, maybe such as like Power Apps, OAuth apps, and Web apps, but however, we have seen like OAuth has been OAuth app has been heavily used in the various campaigns that we'll be discussing in upcoming slides. So basically, the reason for attacker abusing that OAuth apps, there are multiple reasons, but however, these four are the main reasons in terms of. Since OAuth feature has been used token-based authentication and authorization, attackers are using tokens to abuse it and steal the victim's token. And also, most of the organizations are having a lack of visibility and control on cloud apps. And also, like most of the campaigns that we have seen recently all are third-party apps. Because since it is a third-party apps, most of them are unvetted. So because of that, attacker has been leveraging that unvetted third-party apps. And also, we have seen the shift from user to application context. And I mean, like though there are lots of uh, trends we've been using the OAuth app, but what we have seen and observed in concerned phishing, where phishing has been used as uh, OAuth app, and email laundry, where OAuth apps have been heavily used for doing spamming purpose. And also, we have seen like OAuth app has been used for business email compromise and crypto mining. OK. Let's, before going to actual campaigns which uses OAuth, OAuth attack, so just we'll give the overflow on how the protocol works. Though the OAuth protocol is a very complex stuff, but I try to simplify as much as possible. So this will give the information on the OAuth flow and the access token. So these are the four entities with OAuth protocol works. So one is like client application, resource owner, authorization server, and resource server. The flow would be like client application, request for the authorization to resource owner, and resource owner has to give the grant. So when the grant is done, with that grant, it sends access token from authorization server. With the authorization server access token, it goes to resource server, and with that, resource can able to access in client application. So the place where I use this access token, just to be known, in upcoming slide, I'll be using the token. I'm referring wherever I say token, it's access token. So with this uh, overview, let's move forward. OK. Yep. So these are the prevalent OAuth campaign. And we have seen like there are high volume of OAuth apps were involved in this campaign. If you notice, like this OAuth campaign has been started since 2019, and it is still going on. And if you notice, like concerned phishing campaign, we have seen 
three campaigns with various techniques, which we'll be seeing in upcoming slides. But in 2019 to 2020, we have seen like consent fishing campaign. And also in March 2022, yes, we have seen the consent fishing campaign. And then we have also seen in the same year, uh, 2022, we have seen one more campaign. And there was other campaign where automated email laundry, as I mentioned, like uh, OAuth app has been heavily used for doing the spamming purpose. So in this category, we have seen two campaigns, one in the July 2022 and other on the May to October 2023. So most of the camp apps involved here are sophisticated and also high volumes of OAuth campaigns were involved. And also we have noticed recently like there are OAuth apps were being heavily used for crypto mining in last year, May 2023, and also like OAuth app has been used for Beck case. Let's go deeper uh, into various TTPs which you have seen in this campaign. Okay, let's start with consent campaign one. So here the initial vector is email. So same as a traditional email, here attacker sends the email with the consent phishing mail. So this is quite different from the traditional. So the link here. When the user clicks this link, so if you, the, the screenshot which you have seen here is like, there was a SANS attack which was happened on 2020, which was leveraging OAuth app. So the screenshot, it looks like this, like user will get the mail, like phishing mail, and once user click this, so they will be getting the consent page. With the consent page, user accept this, and once they have accept this, application token has been stolen. With the stolen application, attacker tries to create an app in compromise tenant. And with the compromised app, and also in this campaign, what we have noticed, like defense evasion, which was used in this campaign, like attacker has used a logo and app name, which are branded one. So make sure that uh, user is getting, uh, probability of uh, getting user compromising in this stage is high. So, Defense evasion is one of the technique which in this campaign, which we have seen like known app name and logo impersonation. And then privilege escalation. So privilege escalation matters a lot when you do the, doing higher privilege to attain something bigger than the usual one. So in this case, what we have noticed like mailbox setting read write permission and files read write permission. With this permission, attacker can do anything with app same as the user entity. Yeah, so in this case, what we have noticed like collection was used to, here the entity has been like, email was a target by the attacker. So keyword, sensitive keyword search has been used. So in this campaign, what you have seen, these are the sensitive keyword which we have seen. So attacker is very targeted on what is the sensitive email, which is very targeted one. If any of the mail has a subject with this or the body with this, attacker able to segregate it. And once this is done, attacker does exfiltration. It does exfiltration with a inbox forwarding rule. So inbox forwarding rule can be created only if the app has a permission to do, doing the lots of uh, high privilege permission. With this, and also here in this case, we have noticed like there was a defense evasion clearing the tracks. Once the, everything is done, exfiltration done, attacker tries to clear. With this, let's move on to the campaign two. Similar to campaign one, here attacker was using the consent phishing mail and steal application token. And in this case, the target is admin accounts. And then the persistence here, I mean like similar to the older campaign, what we have noticed like attacker is using compromised tenant. And also in this case, compromised admin account has created admin user. With the admin user, app has been created, newly created admin users. So this is to bypass machine learning algorithms which we build on uh, products. And similar to the earlier campaign, we have seen the similar defense evasion. And also, in earlier campaign, there was a collection, something different, sorry, uh, defense evasion different. But in this case, a discovery was mainly focused on reading contacts and profile enumeration file. And for collection, here they have expanded the scope beyond the email. Here it's OneDrive and SharePoint has been used. And then that same technique which was seen in earlier campaign, like inbox rule was used for exfiltration. This is with the campaign two. And with that, let's move on to campaign three. Yeah. Campaign three is a little bit sophisticated in terms of uh, initial access, where actual malicious payload was seen in the attachment, an HTML redirected file, the attachment. 
but unlike the earlier campaign, it was seen in the body. Same credential access was used to steal that application token. And here, attacker has used the own tenant. Instead of compromised tenant, attacker has used the own tenant to create a PAP. And the same similar defensive issue. And also discovery here, attacker has used the directory enumeration for discovery. And for collection, mail folders and emails have been used. Yeah. So let's, let's just see the complete overview on, in terms of sophistication and similarities. If you see it, uh, the, the color coding which we have put, like yellow color, it's mostly like similarity in the campaign techniques, and the red is sophistication. So if you see like campaign one and campaign two, email body has a link, but campaign three has a payload in the attachment. And across three campaign, application token has been stolen for doing that activities. And campaign one and campaign two, compromised tenant was used, but in campaign three, it was like attacker won tenant. And then like high privilege scopes were used, and the logo impersonation was used across all campaign. And in campaign one, what we have noticed, like the scope is only for the email, and campaign two, attacker has evolved the scope with email, OneDrive, and SharePoint. And then in campaign three, it is like directory enumeration. This is how we can compare like similarities and sophistication between all. Let's move on to other campaign. OK. OK. This is the email entry campaign, what we have told in Flow. So in the email laundry campaign, earlier case in concern phishing, what we have noticed, like, initial access is the email. But here, initial access is user has been compromised. With the compromised using a password spraying, that was initial access, and the persistence. So in this case, attacker has used a compromised tenant for creating an app, but with the permission of Exchange Manager's app. The reason of doing it is, like, Having a global and exchange admission role does that privilege escalation. And followed by that, in this case, what we have noticed, like attacker has used a PowerShell to modify the exchange setting in order to create an inbox connector and also transport rule. So why do we need transport rule? Yes, it's because of the defense evasion. So attacker uses a transport email in order to view the email header, attacker uses the exchange transport rule. This was a thing was used. And here, the main motive of the attacker is to send the SAM mails through the third-party fish service. This is a snapshot of the thing which we have seen. And moving on to the email laundry campaign two, yeah, similar to the earlier campaign one, like initial access and persistence was similar, but only the, with respect to the permission, it was quite different. And credential access, in this case, which we have noticed, like what application certificate has been used, updated, but we have seen other set of apps where Instead of updating the certificate, we have seen like what compromised account has service principal owner has been created. Once it is done, consent to application is done. And, and I, I mean, like here also, the motive of the attacker is spam. But this is quite different from the earlier campaign. Earlier campaign, it's like spam was sending outside the organization. But here, the spam was sending internal and external. So the attack is huge. The mass email was sent across internal and external organization. Both are spam. So these are the high-level technique what we have seen in campaign two. So with this, let's compare these two campaigns, same as what we have seen in concern phishing email campaign. So in this case, email laundry, yes. Uh, compromised admin account. In both the cases, password spraying was done to compromise the admin account. And also, like both the cases, it's a compromised tenant. But however, the permission used here was mainly on the exchange manager's permission to create an EXO inbound connector, whereas the other way is like email send operation was used for sending the mail. And impact in both the cases I mentioned earlier, that spam was spamming the spam mail to others. It's an Im impact that is like which we have seen a motive of the attacker. In campaign one, it's limited to external. In campaign two, it is like both internal and external. With this, I'll hand over the mic to Shilin. Thanks, Venkat. Hey, everyone. So this is the third scenario where we observed what applications being leveraged in a business email compromise campaign. Yeah. So the initial access vector here was also a phishing email. And uh, these are snippets of those phishing emails seen uh, sent by the threat actor across multiple organizations. 
uh, where where in the malicious URL was in the email uh, email body itself, and we saw pattern in the emails that were sent, and it was in the email subjects. So these were the email subjects seen across multiple organizations sent by the threat actor. Uh, post when the user clicked the URL, the user is being projected with a deceptive sign-in page, which is a Microsoft login page, wherein if a tenant uh, admin has configured to use branding, the uh, landing page also had the branding elements in it, similar to this screenshot. This was followed by session hijacking and then stolen session replay attack for a, a successful initial access. Post which the threat actor was seen being persistent, leveraging the OAuth application. The threat actor was seen logging into the Azure portal to create and then register an OAuth application, a multi-tenant OAuth application in this case. And what we observed was the OAuth application was given graph API permissions with the scope of email read, write, send, user read, et cetera, which would actually enable the OAuth app to perform multiple uh, suspicious and malicious activities. And the threat actor was seen to perform a defense evasion technique that is prior to performing any other activity was seen creating an inbox rule in the compromised user's mailbox in order to move the emails to junk folder and then mark it as read so, so that it, uh, it would evade the detection. And what we saw across multiple customers was that the email uh, inbox rule that was created had a suspicious name that is with the special characters, similar to this one with four dots in it. It was followed by addition of credentials uh, to the uh, particular OAuth application to perform further activities. And the next stages of the attacks were, were uh, the exact ones where we saw the actual shift from user context to app context. That is, app was leveraged for performing phishing activities, that is to send phishing emails, and also back related activities. So we saw close to 3.5K emails being sent across within a short time frame by the threat actor using the OAuth app, as well as performing back related activities, that is collection activities, accessing email folders, reading emails, fetching the attachments, as well as uh, listing out the people associated to the compromised user. So this snippet is the graph API calls made by the OAuth application to list out the people, that is top people associated to the compromised user, as well as the messages in the uh, user's mailbox. So as part of the whole campaign, we saw a huge number of applications being leveraged to perform phishing as well as collection activities. So moving on to the final scenario that we have, where OAuth applications were leveraged for cryptocurrency mining. The initial access vector here was leveraging leak credentials and signing in via VPN. Again, persistence with OAuth application. The, uh, the threat actor was seen creating an OAuth application, but here it was a single tenanted application. That is, the application has the privilege to perform activities within that particular tenant only. This was followed by a privilege escalation wherein the compromised user was an owner of the subscription. So this compromised user was used to add contributor role to the OAuth application. That gives it more privilege, that is to perform multiple activities the OAuth app couldn't have performed prior to this. Again, uh, from a resource development perspective, the user was seen adding secrets to the existing applications in the tenant, as well as the new application that was created. So it, it was seen that the threat actor was actually using the existing applications as well, because those applications already had access to certain resources, which was abused. This was followed by the threat actor leveraging OAuth application to create virtual machines to perform cryptocurrency mining activities. What we saw was uh, initially the threat actor created a small set of VMs and then performed certain activities, that is crypto mining activities, kind of a testing, which was followed by the threat actor coming back and then creating a huge volume of VMs uh, with the OAuth application. And we saw a pattern in the VMs uh, here created by the threat actor. It had the domain name followed by the region across all tenants, like the VM names had this pattern. This is to avoid suspicion, again, a defense evasion technique uh, performed by the threat actor. Now that we have covered multiple campaigns with diverse TTPs, let's move on to the learnings and takeaways. To start with, 
one of the most easiest and simple but most effective one, uh, step is to enable MFA. Please enable MFA. So uh, in most of the password spray attacks which were successful, the compromised users were mostly those users without MFA being enabled. So thus we can actually disrupt uh, such threats at a very early stage. Dormancy and app hygiene. So disabling dormant applications with risky permissions, be it single tenanted or multi tenanted, would actually uh, help us stop such OAuth application based threats at the persistence phase. Having a app hygiene, that is maintaining app hygiene to manage unused apps, to have a check on those unused credentials, and those credentials which are expiring would actually help us give a control on the applications in our environment or in our tenant. Using conditional access policies. That is, applying conditional access policies on user, IP, or devices would actually help us ensure secure sign-ins, thus uh, helping us avoid risky sign-ins by compromised users. Enabling security defaults would actually help us revoke access in real time for those users who were seen being potential threat because of the activities, suspicious activities performed by uh, the uh, user, maybe because it's compromised. Securing Azure resources. So again, enable MFA, and then limiting usage uh, quota and monitoring uncommon activities, that is mostly sign-in activities, would actually help us secure our cloud resources. From an audit perspective, reviewing current privilege levels for all the identities would help us know those users or identities which are kind of unused or overprivileged, which can be revoked. Having a check on application impersonation privileges in Exchange Online would actually help us understand those who have access to the mailboxes uh, so that uh, we can actually control that. Uh, it might be a misconfiguration which can be uh, kind of rectified, or it can be an actual malicious attack that can be disrupted. Now that we are done with the learnings, let me circle back to the initial question that we had. Is user plus device the most prevalent threat here? It was. It was in the past. Now it is user, device, plus applications. I guess now we all get it. So we have seen an unprecedented increase in OAuth applications being leveraged uh, across multiple campaigns with diverse TTPs. Uh, this actually is bypassing most of the security measures, and it is very difficult for us to detect and disrupt. And there is a high chance that the attacker might come back with a more sophisticated attack pattern. That is, think of a situation wherein all the TTPs across multiple campaigns are being put into a single campaign, and we need to be prepared for that. Uh, as cybersecurity is a team sport, we learn and share our knowledge. So putting these learnings into action would actually help us thwart such threats at an early stage, thus protecting our customers. So the next time you see some suspicious activity in the uh, cloud, make sure that you check for any application behind it. Because applications are bad. There are bad applications. So beware of bad cloud applications. Thank you.